It is rare that I make a video that goes out of date almost as soon as I hit publish on it, but that is what happened when I made a video recommending the best 3D printers for absolute beginners. Because as soon as I hit publish on that video, I unboxed two new 3D printers that redefined for me what 3D printing could be for the absolute beginner. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing, or you just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. I hope that you'll stick around and maybe even join me on my Discord, where I have a great community of people who are doing amazing things with 3D printing and helping each other do amazing things as well. I hope to see you there. Now, before I talk about why these 3D printers are fantastic for absolute beginners, I want to talk a little bit about what is an absolute beginner. In fact, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to play a little game with you. Yeah, you watching. I would like you to pause this video, jump in the comments section, and tell me what you think an absolute beginner in 3D printing would be. The sort of person who you envision in your mind would be an absolute beginner in 3D printing. You wanna try that out? Go ahead and pause the video now and do that. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that is because I periodically get comments on videos, especially videos where I'm talking about 3D printers that would be appropriate for beginners, where people say things like, well, if they don't know how to operate a zip file, they have no business doing 3D printing. Or if they don't know at least how to build a thing, then they don't deserve to use 3D printing. And the problem with that sort of thinking is that, well, first and foremost, it's gatekeeping. It's saying that 3D printing is only for people who reach a certain threshold that you've decided is the right one. And I say, why? Why can't 3D printing be for everybody? Everybody, including the person who has never used a computer before, including the person who's used a little bit of a computer but just doesn't want to deal with the headache and mess of putting together a 3D printing kit. A person who wants to make cool things but doesn't necessarily want to make the 3D printer as part of that process. For me, the absolute beginner is Anybody who wants to get into 3D printing, regardless of what they're capable of doing, regardless of previous experience, if somebody wants to have a 3D printer and get into 3D printing, I think they should be allowed to do that. Now, admittedly, there are some barriers to getting into 3D printing, but the amazing thing is that those barriers are dropping. And with these 3D printers, we have seen those barriers drop and mass in a way that I am very excited about. The ideal scenario would be a 3D printer that all you had to do was say to it what you wanted and it would spring to life and make it happen. And we are not there yet. However, these machines do answer that call and move in that direction in exciting ways. But a good beginner-friendly 3D printer would also grow with you. As your skills increase, as you want to expand the things that you can do, it will be able to answer that call. And at least two of these 3D printers do that, but in different ways, which is why I can't say one's better than the other. It kind of depends on what you want. So let's break it down. Let's talk about these individually. And to start, I want to talk about the Toy Box 3D printer. Now, I've talked about the Toy Box 3D printer in the past. It was on my previous list and it is still on the list because of all the 3D printers I've ever used, nobody has come close to the library of objects that you can 3D print with this machine, the accessibility of them, and the ease of use of using them. And as long as the toy box has that library and that ease of use, I think it's going to remain on this list. However, the toy box is kind of falling behind in terms of hardware. The hardware that it has was fine for when it came out, but seeing what's coming out now, I feel like toy box really needs to step up their game if they want to stay on top of that. Or alternatively, if they could take that library of objects and port it over to one of these other 3D printers, maybe partner with the manufacturers, I think that that would open up a new world of possibilities, not just for them, but also for the people who want to get into 3D printing. 
So if you have young kids and you want to give them the gift of a couple of years of absolutely easy 3D printing, all you need is the toy box 3D printer and a spare phone that can run the app on. And I just leave this spare phone next to the 3D printer. And my kids, anytime they want to 3D print something, go up, choose something from their library, print it, and they have never been bored with this machine. So toy box still on the list and still a good recommendation for very young kids that want to get in 3D printing. But what if you're a little bit older and a little bit more tech savvy? Not maybe absolutely tech savvy, but a little bit more tech savvy. Well, then these two other options are good for you. And I'm going to start talking about the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. Now, I want to be clear. I'm talking about the Mini itself, not the Mini with the AMS system, but we will talk about that in just a minute. Once you have it set up, there's an app on your phone or an app on your computer. But I want to talk about the app on the phone because it does have a library of 3D prints that you can just choose one from there and print it. Now, its library isn't as focused or as easy to use as the toy box, but part of that is because its library of files is being added to by the community. And anybody who wants to can add a file to Maker World, upload the 3MF files that will tell the 3D printer how to work, and it will be available for you to use on your 3D printer. And that, I think, is super exciting. You don't even need to have your 3D printer, to have a slicer, an app on your computer, you can 3D print directly from your phone. And that makes it just so much easier to use. Now I talked about growing with you and the way that the A1 grows with you is with the AMS system, being able to add the ability to 3D print with four colors. If you're an artist, that's fantastic, but not just four colors. There's another useful function of this AMS system if you have, you know, like the end of a spool that you're worried about, oh, I don't know if this is enough. Well, there's something you can do. You can load that partial spool up into slot one and then load a full spool in the next slot. And when the first one runs out, it'll just jump to the next one and keep printing with it. In fact, you could do this with slot two and slot three. I would say make sure that slot four has a full spool in it. But if you do that, you can use up those last little remnants of spools right to the end with this unit. For that alone, I feel like it's useful for everybody, in my opinion. Now, on the other hand, there's the Creality K1. And the Creality K1 also comes with its own 3D printing app, Creality Cloud. Creality Cloud also allows you to just look up something, find it, and say, ooh, I want to print that, and it springs to life and makes it happen for you. But Creality Cloud does it differently than Bamboo does. Creality Cloud doesn't force people who upload files to their app to also upload a settings file. They don't worry about that. They let the settings work themselves out. And the slicer on Creality Cloud is, in my opinion, a full featured slicer. It allows you to place the object on the bed. It allows you to choose your settings. It is, for all intents and purposes, a slicer in your phone for their 3D printers. But because of that, the Creality Cloud app allows you to do something that you can't really do on the Bamboo app. That is, you could make something on your phone. There are a few apps for designing or sculpting or making stuff on your phone. Download the STL to your phone and then from your phone, load that file into Creality Cloud and print it. It's an amazing workflow that means that you can 3D print with this machine even if you don't have a computer and be practically as functional as people who do. However, Creality doesn't have a multi-material system on it in any way. So how does this one grow with you? Well, the Creality K1 is considerably more hackable than the Bamboo Labs 3D printer. In fact, there are already people who are making add-ons and changes for this 3D printer out there, and they will continue to do so. There are manufacturers making third-party parts for this 3D printer, and they will continue to do so. So this 3D printer grows with you if you think that maybe you might want to have a 3D printer that you can mess with and play with and see if you can do new things with. 
In fact, the firmware on this machine is a modified version of Clipper, but you can put vanilla Clipper on here and open up new functionality if you ever think that that's a direction that you want to go. So there we go, three excellent solutions for absolute beginners. For the kids, I cannot recommend the toy box enough and that has not changed. For the artist, I think that the Bamboo Labs A1 answers that niche perfectly. And for the budding, perhaps techno play person, I think that the Creality K1 is an excellent choice. But I honestly don't think that you'd go wrong with any of these choices. If you want to get into 3D printing, there's no reason why you can't just do that now. That statement is more true now than it ever has been. Now, I do want to make a quick side note here about maker spaces. I work in a maker space. I see people coming in from the public all day long and wanting to do 3D printing. And so when you're in that particular space, if you're ever in the opportunity to make a recommendation for a school or a library or just a public maker space, keep in mind their requirements are a little bit different than well, just your average person. We need a machine that's rugged and tough that can stand up to being abused by a lot of people, but also be easy enough that with just a little bit of training, you can just hand it off to people and let them use it. And in that situation, the 3D printer that I would actually choose would be the Creality K1 over the bamboo. Yeah, that might be a little bit of a surprise. But the enclosure on this machine and the fact that their app is just so easy to use. And I'm not talking about the one on the phone, I'm talking about the one on the computer. Overall makes this a better choice between these two. But honestly, if you decided to get some A1's Bamboo Labs in there or other Bamboo Lab 3D printers, they would not be bad choices in that situation. I honestly think that we're to a point where there are so many good choices, it's hard to definitively say one over the other. But that's it for this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching and I wanna remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special to me, so take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.